global consumption of dietary supplements is at an all-time high. A 2016 market assessment projected that the global dietary supplements market will reach $278 billion by 2024, from its current level of $122 billion. That's a lot of supplements. In the U.S. alone, the market size was valued at $26 billion in 2015. Botanicals make up a sizable portion of this. In 2010, the global market for botanical dietary supplements was $33 billion, and the U.S. market was $6.92 billion. The use of botanical dietary supplements is projected to rise based on the rising prominence of using herbs to promote health and prevent mental and physical disease. While the majority of consumers of supplements are adults, more than a third of U.S. children reported their use in a 2007 National Health Interview Survey. So what is a dietary supplement? In the United States regulatory framework, supplements are defined as a product, other than tobacco, that is intended to supplement the diet that bears or contains one or more of the following dietary ingredients. A vitamin, a mineral, an herb or other botanical, an amino acid, a dietary supplement used by man to supplement the diet by increasing the total dietary intake, or a concentrate, metabolite, constituent, extract, or combination of any ingredient described in this clause. Importantly, the dietary supplements is not considered to be a conventional food item or a sole item of a meal or diet, and it must be marketed in an ingestible form, such as in a capsule, a powder, soft gel, gel cap, liquid, or other form. Botanicals can be incorporated into dietary supplements in two ways. The raw plant material can be used as the ingredient or an extract containing the chemical metabolites of the botanical can be used instead. Some of the top selling botanical dietary supplements in the United States include ingredients like whorehound, cranberry, echinacea, green tea, turmeric, black cohosh, and Garcinia camboga with annual revenues for all of these individually in excess of $40 million. Regulatory guidelines for dietary supplements were established by the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, also known as the DSHA Act of 1994. An important distinction between a botanical drug and a botanical dietary supplement is that claims specific to a disease or drug claims are expressly prohibited in a dietary supplement. Furthermore, dietary supplements are not held to the same standards of safety and efficacy as a botanical drug is. Efficacy is not required and safety assessments follow food standards. Safety is the responsibility of the manufacturer, and safety assurances are limited to post-marketing surveillance for adverse effects. Furthermore, unlike botanical drugs, there are no standardization requirements for botanical dietary supplements. The action of a botanical dietary supplement can range from mild to potent, and this really depends in large part on the dose and the form of the botanical preparation. For example, a glass of peppermint tea is generally considered safe to drink, but the consumption of a concentrated peppermint oil could be toxic. Although the general public often considers botanical supplements natural and safe alternatives to conventional synthetic pharmaceuticals, there is relatively little scientific evidence behind this belief. Moreover, some ingredients have the potential to cause herb-drug interactions, a good example of this is the grapefruit, which contains phytochemicals that can interfere with the way that your body's drug metabolizing enzymes work and can result in the inactivation of a number of pharmaceutical drugs. More research on the topic of herb-drug and even herb-herb interactions is currently underway. The demand for dietary supplements is driven by a variety of factors that include an aging population, a growing trend to self-medicate, mistrust in the conventional medical establishment, 
increasing difficulty to obtain health insurance, and the perception that natural is healthy and that plant products are safe. Botanical supplements are frequently criticized for poorly proven efficacy and safety, lack of standardization, and quality standards. This isn't to say that there's no potential in botanical ingredients. Indeed, some of our most promising drugs and most influential drugs have come originally from plants. So your challenge for this lesson is to ask people in your network about their preferences concerning dietary supplements. Which ones do they like to take and why? What motivates them to supplement their diet?